Preventing and reducing violence against children is a priority for UNICEF in South Africa. That's why we believe it is important to understand the threats which place children at risk. Statistics tell us that 3.8 million are orphaned in South Africa, with about 2 million of these children orphaned due to HIV-AIDS. Over 11 million children are receiving the child support grant. Many of these children are among societies most vulnerable when it comes to the perpetration of violence. South Africa's globally admired legislation makes a positive difference, as does the efforts by government and civil society. Through technical assistance and policy support, UNICEF is committed to supporting these efforts. With this in mind, we commissioned an evaluation of the Safer South Africa program in 2014 to learn lessons and make recommendations for future programs. With the Department of Social Development, we train social workers from the Eastern Cape on Sinovuyo, a parenting program designed to prevent and curb child maltreatment among vulnerable families. UNICEF also serves on a number of child-focused professional and administrative bodies which are there to support caregivers. With the Department of Social Development and the National Association of Child and Youth Care Workers, UNICEF supports Isi Bindi, a community-based child protection program which supports vulnerable families and provides required services. By late 2015, the program had reached an estimated 20,500 vulnerable children. Initial results from the randomized control trial supported by UNICEF show an encouraging decrease in child maltreatment among families who benefited from the program. We supported the development of the school safety framework, which was finalized and approved for implementation by the Minister of Basic Education in April 2015. Thus far, over 1,500 master trainers, 68% of them female, have been trained to support the implementation of the framework in schools. With the Presidency, we completed a review of government's response to violence against women and children, and with the University of Cape Town, a study on the causes of such violence was undertaken. Both studies aim to assist the work of the Interministerial Committee on Violence Against Women and Children. Early 2015 was a rise in xenophobic violence in Durban and Johannesburg. In partnership with Save the Children South Africa, we directly assisted 437 children by setting up and equipping three child-friendly spaces with learning kits, providing psychosocial training for facilitators and identifying and registering the affected children. Child Protection Week and the 16 Days of No Violence Against Women and Children provided opportunities for us, with our partners, to highlight the need to safeguard children. Our efforts included commissioning public service announcements that were carried on several media platforms in 2015. Working with the Children's Institute, we supported the launch of the Child Gage Report in 2014 and 2015 in Pretoria and Cape Town respectively. The child protection mandate of UNICEF South Africa remains critical and we have to continue with our partners in government and civil society to continue to work together to protect all children living in this country. Working with partners and communicating our work is key to the UNICEF mandate in South Africa and globally. In 2014 and 2015, we continued our work with Santam in support of education, with the Univiva Foundation in support of sanitation, and with the Western Cape Town in support of early childhood development. We began new partnerships with Titans Cricket to help protect children, the Ernest E. and Brendelin Stempel Foundation, International Bank Vaults, and Deutsche Bank South Africa Foundation. In addition to corporates and foundations, UNICEF depends on the generosity and support of individuals. Pledge donors make monthly contributions to UNICEF to better the lives of children. 2015 saw a 71% increase from 2014 in the number of pledge donors. In partnership with the SABC Foundation, an estimated 60% of children in South Africa were able to view UNICEF content. In 2015, we built up new partnerships with Ndalo Media, publishers of Destiny magazine, and the South African Airways magazine, Sao Borna, which now carries a regular column on UNICEF. Through our celebrity advocates, we are able to promote our work in innovative ways. Producer and musician Zeke Spantwini, television personality Joanne Strauss, and singer Tseli Moholo are powerful voices for the rights of children in South Africa. In 2014, with the support of UNICEF South Africa Goodwill Ambassador Gavin Raja, 
UNICEF with the Department of Social Development launched the hashtag End Violence Against Children campaign at Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in Cape Town. In 2014 and 2015, we recorded public service announcements that were broadcast in cinemas, on television and on radio. UNICEF's work was also profiled on social media platforms as we increased our website and YouTube visitors, as well as our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram followers. With the Children's Radio Foundation, we organized a children's media conference in Cape Town to provide young people with the skills to use media to highlight issues and to find solutions to their everyday challenges. Working with special envoy Grasa Michelle, we hosted a panel discussion on children's rights during the World Economic Forum Africa meeting in Cape Town in June 2015. And in October 2014 and 2015, the annual UNICEF Western Charity Ball was held, raising 280,000 rand for UNICEF programs in 2015. August 2015 saw our global partner Unilever launch a campaign where proceeds from the sale of the cleaning agent Domestos supported UNICEF's sanitation programs in schools. In partnership with 20th Century Fox, we screened the documentary He Named Me Malala in Durban, Cape Town and Pretoria to hundreds of high school students in October 2015. A month later, the 2015 UNICEF Equity Report was launched in Johannesburg with Ndalo Media. In September 2015, UNICEF South Africa's partnership with the Global Child Forum, an initiative of Their Majesties the King and Queen of Sweden, supported the inaugural Global Child Forum on Southern Africa, hosted in Pretoria, which brought together stakeholders from the private and public sector, academia and youth, to discuss issues affecting youth in Southern Africa. As the year drew to a close, Cape Town hosted two clipper boats painted in UNICEF branding, which sail around the world to raise funds and awareness on children's rights. We arranged for some of our Cape Town-based partners to sail on the boats while learning more about the work of our organisation. UNICEF is proud of our many partnerships that make a meaningful difference to the lives of children in South Africa and globally. And we will continue to build on these networks as we communicate our collective commitment to children. The right to a basic education is fundamental and is a powerful tool to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and South Africa's National Development Plan 2030. Learning starts from birth and quality early learning experiences sow the seeds that grow into quality learning in schools and beyond. 2015 concluded with the good news that Cabinet had approved the National Integrated Early Childhood Development Policy, the culmination of a three-year process supported by UNICEF. We also supported the Department of Basic Education to develop and implement the National School Safety Framework and the Education. To promote the prevention of HIV among adolescents, UNICEF hosted a discussion with government, civil society, academia and young people focusing on the Department of Basic Education Draft National Policy on HIV, STIs and TB. The Girls and Boys Education Movement Clubs are made up of school-based learners who promote human rights, youth participation and mutual respect. Since being set up by the Department of Basic Education supported by UNICEF in 2003, there are today an estimated 13,000 girls and boys education movement clubs with close to 650,000 members throughout South Africa. UNICEF also supports the Techno Girl Program, which identifies school-going girls from disadvantaged communities and places them in corporate mentorship and job shadowing programs. This improves their knowledge of careers in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. By 2015, over 2,000 girl learners from throughout South Africa had benefited from this growing program. UNICEF believes that sport in schools can help counter negative behaviour, create a sense of belonging and promote learning and a safe school environment. The Sports for Development program was introduced in 2007 by the Department of Basic Education with the support from UNICEF. In 2014 and 2015, the program trained 300 sports coaches and 700 physical education teachers in schools throughout South Africa. The quest for lifelong learning starts at birth, and supporting children to discover their world and satisfy their natural curiosity is critical. UNICEF will continue to work so that every child can experience a quality learning that lays the foundation for a prosperous and sustainable future. The health of children is very important to UNICEF. In 2014 and 2015, 
we worked with the government and other partners to reduce the under-5 mortality rate by supporting vital interventions, including vaccinations, increasing access to quality health care, promoting healthy behaviours and strengthening health systems. We continued to work towards the elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, while making sure that all HIV-infected children are on antiretroviral treatment. We improved data quality as this promotes better health outcomes for children. Our work with the Three Feet Approach, implemented since August 2014 in the Nelson Mandela Bay Health District and other selected areas, has made a positive difference. Simply put, by supporting the administration of these key interventions, we have seen healthcare workers and facilities take better care of their patients. To meet the 1990-90 targets for HIV, 90% tested, 90% treated and 90% virally suppressed, UNICEF is using the three feet model to support pregnant women, children and adolescents testing, treatment, care and support. This is an important achievement that we can be proud of. Another success is MomConnect, a mobile health project focusing on SMS alerts and messaging. 5,000 pregnant women were enrolled in the pilot, which was supported by UNICEF. The SMS is linked with electronic medical records to enable tailored messages, support trigger alerts and reminders that track women from pregnancy to the 18-month postnatal period. In 2014 and 2015, MomConnect was expanded by the National Department of Health and other funders to reach nearly all the estimated 1.1 million pregnant women in South Africa. In 2015, UNICEF worked with the national and provincial departments of health to implement the National Plan for Improving Newborn Care. Our support focused on sexually transmitted infections, HIV, family planning, antenatal care, the prevention of mother-to-child transmission, paediatric HIV and breastfeeding. Nutrition is key, and we are therefore working with the Presidency to finalise the National Food and Nutrition Security Plan, which aims to address both malnutrition and food security. So despite the challenges, improvements in the health care of children in South Africa continue to be made. Social policy is an important part of UNICEF's work in South Africa, as with our partners, we work to improve the socio-economic well-being of children. This includes improving access to housing, healthcare, food, water, social security and education. We need to understand the factors that prevent children from reaching their full potential so that we can help combat the interconnected cycle of disadvantage that keeps so many children in a situation of extreme vulnerability. Progress is being made. The expansion by the government of the child support grant over the past 15 years means that 11 million children are now assisted. In addition, the Foster Child Grant and the Child Dependency Grant each reach more than half a million children in need. UNICEF is working with the government to ensure that all those who need assistance do get access. We do this through guiding policy and designing and implementing appropriate programs. In 2015, we organised a training for the Department of Social Development and the South African Social Security Agency focusing on how to assess the impact of policy reforms on child poverty, as well as on public revenues and expenditure. We also partnered with the South African Monitoring and Evaluation Association to build capacity of over 60 participants on results-based programming and we participated in the 5th International Conference on Child Indicators in Cape Town in September 2015. With the Department of Social Development, the South African Human Rights Commission and the Human Sciences Research Council, we also looked at how best we can promote the social inclusion of the most disadvantaged groups of children in South Africa. These programs may sound complicated and technical in parts, but they do play a critical role, shaping how best UNICEF can work with our partners to effectively make a difference to the lives of children in South Africa.